the chimers and their chimes invite us to seek God together. That means we don't come here to find God. God is found everywhere and anywhere. We come here to find each other finding God, and the chimes help us with all of that. But today is a special day. So the coming together is incredibly important today because maybe we've been away for, from each other for a little bit. This is what we call Rally Day. Rally Day, the theme is joy. So to add a little more joy to the chiming this morning, I'm going to ask Desher and Anna to come over here. And now we are going to be seriously chimed into being together. arriving and announcing our connection to God and to each other. I've changed the scripture passage for this morning. Normally it's make a joyful noise unto the Lord, or it's this is the day the Lord has made, and you folks respond. Today I'm going to give you a physical cue. On your feet now. <laughs> Thank you. And I remember growing up and going to different churches and preaching at different churches uh, as I was a seminary student and learning that certain ministers did not tolerate applause well. They figured it was a way of thanking ourselves or making a big deal of ourselves rather than giving unto God. I disagree. When we applaud, we applaud God. When we applaud those who add something extra or special to worship, we are giving thanks to God for what God has given us in that moment. So, on your feet now, applaud God. Very good. Um, Thank you. Welcome to Deerhurst Presbyterian Church. I'm Stephen Jellensperger. Um, this could be your first time with us. This could be your 101st time with us. You can be here right now. You might be at home. You might be at home watching us through the miracles of modern technology. However it is, it is happening. Welcome. We are glad you are here. And prayer is very important to Deerhurst Presbyterian Church. So if you brought a joy or concern with you this morning, there are a bunch of ways that you can get that to me. There are yellow cards in the pews. You can fill out one of those yellow cards. Nancy Fleshauer, who was our head usher this morning, will walk up and down the aisles during the singing of the first hymn. You can hand her your yellow card. Um, you can also text me in the bulletin um, on your screen at home my cell phone number is there. You text me you, with your joy, your concern. It becomes part of our prayers later in worship. You will see that there is an insert. It's full of announcements. You will also know that every Wednesday, uh, Jim, my administrative assistant, sends out the news for the week. So make sure that Jim has the best mailing address and um, Fill out one of those yellow cards if you need to. I think that was it. Um, okay, who's going first? Okay. Hi. 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 Wow, okay. Um, I hope everyone got a chance to look at the garden. Four women worked very hard yesterday. Woo! <laughs> And got all the bricks in and there are only a few left and we had a very generous donation from Sylvia Witherspoon last Friday she sent over with me a whole bunch of perennials which we will plant when some of the annuals die out now people 
This Saturday is the first sociables gathering for the season. Sociables are everyone who is over 21 years of age, and you're all invited to my house for a wine and cheese and planning party, and only eight people have signed up so far. And last year we had like 22. So somebody's missing, and I will sign up the pieces I forgot, so there's really 10 signed up. So please, there's a sign-up sheet down in Memorial Hall where you're going to have your hot dogs. Come down there, sign up so I know how many napkins and plates to get. It's Saturday, this Saturday. Ignore the date in the bulletin. I don't even know what the date is anymore. But it's this Saturday at 7.30 at my house. I hope to see everyone there. Oh, most of you. Everyone would get really crowded. But most of you there at 7.30. Thanks. I think that's just the right number of announcements. So let us take a moment preparing ourselves for the rest of worship. Let us take a moment to still our souls as we listen to the piano meditation. God invites, we respond. Let us 
join together with Daniel as we say yes to God and God's call to worship, God's invitation for us to be here together. Please join me in the call to worship. We are here to worship. God has called us to this place. We travel long and far. God has called us to this place. We are here for the first time, and we have been here many times. God has called us to this place. We come to sing, to listen, to learn, to laugh. God has called us to this place. With unending love, with overflowing grace. God has called us to this place. say there is nothing broken in our lives in need of fixing, it won't get fixed. If we say there is no sin in our lives, if we say we are not making any choices that separate us one from each other and each other from our God, then there is no path to forgiveness. Let us come together. Let us come together in confessing all that separates us from each other and each other from our God. O oh God, you created the world and called it good. Forgive us when we do not see the good. When we are so burdened by the problems of our lives that we cannot claim the joy around us, lift our burdens, O oh God, and remind us that they were never ours to carry alone. Lift our spirits, O oh God and remind us that we are the source of your joy. Lift our hearts, O God, and remind us that you are the source of ours. Forgive us for all that needs forgiving and help us to forgive each other. Forgive us for all that needs forgiving and help us forgive ourselves. In scripture, there is a moment. A moment where the good church people of the day, folks, not an awful lot unlike you and I, who are trying to hold their faith world together. And they bring before Jesus a woman. This woman has been caught in sin, the sin of adultery. And the people say to Jesus, what are you gonna do about this? She has to be punished. And the punishment is clear. She has to be punished or our world falls apart. What do you have to say? Jesus looks at them as Jesus looks at us this morning and say, do what you must do to hold your world together. But let the one of you who has no sin in their own life throw the first stone. Scripture tells us that one by one they mumble, one by one they all go home. Soon all that is left is Jesus and the woman. Jesus looks at the woman as Jesus looks at us today and says, 
where are your accusers? And the woman looks around for us and says, they are gone. And Jesus says, neither do I accuse you. Your sin is forgiven. Go and sin no more. Our reading from the Psalter today is Psalm 100. It's a psalm of thanksgiving and praise. The singer begins by calling all the world to praise God, and not quietly, but with joyful song. The song includes reasons for worship, why we should enter worship thankfully, and then more details in why worshipers should be thankful. Listen for the word from God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our reading from the Gospels this morning comes from Luke chapter 11, verses 1 and 2. In this passage, Jesus has been teaching his disciples and now retreats for a time of prayer. Listen for the word from God. He was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So now it would be appropriate for us to all, together, as a community of faith, pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. With a holy purpose We come together For the highest cause We speak one language From a heart of worship Gathered to bring a song to the world For your glory When one more We will sing Every tribe and every tongue brings a harmony with one voice. We will bring heaven's beautiful melody down to this earth as we sing to our King with one voice. But we sing together Now what defines us Is our love of you From every nation And across all borders Gathered to bring the song to the world For your glory With one voice We will sing Every tribe and every tongue brings a harmony with one voice. We will bring heaven's beautiful melody down to this earth as we sing to our King with one voice. Our God, our God is on the throne. So come on, come on and join the song. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So come on, come on and join the song. Our God, our God is on the throne. So come on, come on and join the song. Hallelujah.
Um, the folks who might be wandering off to church school at the end of the service, they're going to go and do a meet and greet with their teachers. I would ask those people to come forward right now. Now, I have a question for you. You can respond with a show of hands. How many of you have rules in your house? Things that you are allowed to do and things that you are not supposed to do. The people of Israel had been set free. And God, through Moses, gave them some rules. Some things they were allowed to do and some things that they were not allowed to do. Can you guess how many of them there were? There were ten of them. I read from Exodus. I read from the 20th chapter. I begin with the first verse. I'm reading from the message. God spoke all these words. I am God, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the life of slavery. No other gods, only me. No carved gods of any size, shape, or form of anything, whatever. Whether of things that fly, walk, or swim. Don't bow down to them. Don't serve them because I am God, your God. I am a most jealous God, punishing the children for any of their sins that pass onto them, to the third, yes, and even to the fourth generation of those who hate me. But I am unswervingly loyal to the thousands who love me and keep my commandments. No using the name of your God, your God, in curses or silly banter. God won't put up with the irrelevant use of God's name. Observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Work six days and do everything you need to do, but on the seventh day, it's the Sabbath to your God. Your God, don't do any work. Not you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your servant, nor your maid, or your animals. Not even the foreign guests visiting in your town. For in six days, God made heaven and earth and sea and everything in them. God rested on the seventh day. Therefore, God blessed the Sabbath day. He set it apart as a holy day. Just one second. Man. Honor your father and mother so that you live a long time in the land that your God, your God is giving to you. No murder, no adultery, no stealing, no lies about your neighbor, no lusting after your neighbor's house or wife or servant or maid or ox or donkey. Don't set your heart on anything that is your neighbor. This is the word of the Lord. Now, now scoot up. Now, Vinny, did you have a question for me? Oh, okay, well, come forward. Scoot right up here. We have some guests. Good morning, everybody. It's time to play Name That Commandment. Our first contestant comes from Hope Presbury Church. Please welcome Ollie Wright. It's so exciting to be here at Deerhurst Presbyterian Church. I know I can win, win, win. Our second contestant is from Grace Presbury Church. Please welcome Harmony. I can do, I can do. 
What did you say, Harmony? I was saying a prayer. I can do anything through Christ who strengthens me. Oh, good one, Harmony. I have a prayer, too. The Lord of hosts is with me yet, so I won't forget, so I won't forget. Ahem. <clears throat> you know how the game is played. If you answer the question correctly, you earn ten points. If you're wrong, your opponent can answer the question for double the points. Ready? The first question, what are the ten seas? Oh, let me see. The Red Sea, the Dead Sea, oh, the Mediterranean Sea, and uh, uh, Tennessee. Is that ten? I'm sorry, Ollie. Any ideas, Harmony? I think the ten seas are the ten commandments, but I'm just a little birdie. A correct answer. The ten commandments. 20 points for Harmony. <laughs> Next question. What were the Ten Commandments written on? Oh, I know. A MacBook Pro 16-inch with a liquid retina XDR display and a 96-gigabyte memory. No, no, no. I think the Ten Commandments were written in stone. Correct, Harmony. 20 points for you. Next question. What is the first commandment? Oh, I know, I know. Be number one. Always, always, always put yourself first. <laughs> the, um, I'm sorry, Ollie. That's incorrect. Harmony, do you know the first commandment? Hmm. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Now that's an important commandment, but my answer says, you shall have no other gods before me. Sorry, neither of you scores this time. Aww. Aww. Oops. What's the next question? What is the commandment most often quoted by your mother? Oh, that's easy. Do not steal the gummy worms. Mom says, Mom says, always tell the truth. Excellent. You're both right. Do not steal and do not tell lies are both commandments. Ten points for each of you. I'm on a roll. What's next? Here's the question. What is the shortest commandment? Oh, that's so easy. Jesus wept. <laughs> shortest commandment, not shortest verse. Oh. Harmony, do you know? I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Do not kill. Correct. You oh. earn 20 more points. Okay, okay, wait, let me see. Zero, zero, carry the four. 70 to 10, Harmony, you're killing me. Oh, no, 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 wait. You just said God commanded do not kill. God was talking about murder, Ollie, not losing a quiz game. Oh. Okay, you two birds. For the final question, think. What is the greatest commandment? Oh, I know, I know, um, well, maybe, um, the Lord of hosts was with me not, for I forgot, for I forgot. Sorry, Ollie, someone asked Jesus that question. He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. It's in the gospel according to Matthew. Excuse me, isn't that the same answer you gave for the first commandment? Yes. I think the greatest commandment is the first commandment. Hmm. Your answer is correct, but let me confer with the judge for a ruling. Good luck, Harmony. I sure wish I knew as much about God's commandments as you do. You can, Ollie, and I would be glad to help you learn. The Ten Commandments are in Exodus, chapter 20. Wait, you would help me? I'm your opponent. Remember, the second part of the Great Commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. That includes friends, too. Good news! 
Harmony was correct for both answers because the question wasn't clear whether it was asked for God's first commandment given to Moses or for the commandment spoken by Jesus to be the first and most important. Oh wait, wait, how, how, how can that be good news for both of us? Harmony won anyway. Because Ollie Wright and Harmony, you're both being invited back next week for another game of Name That Commandment. Yay! Ollie Wright! That will give me lots of time to read the Bible and study God's commandments. It's always a good thing to read the good book. And we'll learn a lot in church school, too. Oh, church school, I can't wait! And that's all the time we have for today. See you next week. Now we have a special treat. The Deerhurst Choir is going to sing our theme song. You guys can go back to, your people can go back to your people. Guidance, prayer, and field reports. Guidance we find in scripture through things like the Ten Commandments. And often we hear the Ten Commandments and we hear God giving us individuals instructions. 
on how we are to behave. Well, the truth actually is that the Ten Commandments were given to the people of God. The Ten Commandments were given to a community so they might observe rituals, so they might have, create rules and regulations that keep them moving toward God and caring for each other. There are also places in Scripture, Jesus says, love the Lord God with everything that's in you, love your neighbor as yourself. Those are the most powerful two commandments. There's also places in Scripture the prophet Micah says, what does the Lord require? Do justice, fall madly in love with being kind to one another, and walk humbly with your God. So there are things that it is good to know to carry around with us, not so that we can beat up on ourselves or we can beat up on other people for not doing them the way we learned them, but so that it brings and holds together a community. Guidance, prayer. This morning we heard the Lord's Prayer. That's a good prayer to memorize. There's a lots of other prayers, but in that prayer, we're given everything we need to do to stay connected to God through the highs and the lows. So today we talk about guidance. Today we talk about prayer, and we've prayed the Lord's Prayer together. And now I'm going to invite some folks to give some feedback reports. There was a clergy person, Walt Giles, in northern New York. And I'm sure that Walt is now in heaven, bending God's ear, because he was well into retirement 20 some odd years ago, 27 years ago. But Walt said, you know, the church does some things right. But one of the things it doesn't do enough of is invite people to give field reports. What have they done? What have they seen? What have they heard that has connected them to their God in very special ways? So I'm going to ask Marnie, and I'm going to ask Anna, and I'm going to ask Rich to tell us a little bit about what happened to them in what I've been told is a very thin place. Thin, very few boundaries between here and heaven. So I'll turn things over to them. Good morning. I was given this wonderful privilege of taking 20 youth to Montreat, North Carolina. And if you've not been there, I sure hope you get there someday because it's magnificent. The theme this year was joy. And so I have a couple of things that I noticed while I was there with these youth um, that mean joy to me. Joy is climbing a mountain alongside others, and each morning I accompanied the youth on hikes, and we would leave at like six o'clock in the morning, so we started our day, and um, it was fa just fabulous. Joy is watching youth who are excited about God and think church is cool. Joy is square dancing at the barn dance. Joy is singing among others while bathed in candlelight surrounding Lake Susan. The last evening of um, our time together, we say goodbye to the seniors, and um, it is amazing to watch everyone standing with a candle around this lake, and um, the everyone just cried. <laughs> it was so beautiful. Um, joy is being included in community and sharing our thoughts. Joy is sitting next to someone so brave that for the first time they've left their family and then didn't want to go home. There was the transformation of a young girl from Lockport who had never spent one night away from her parents and she cried and she missed them terribly and by the time we got on the van to come home, she didn't want to come home. Joy is realizing, with the help and the example of Jesus, that we can listen, accept, and care for others, regardless of their lifestyle choices and the way they have been created. So my question to you, or my questions, who brings you joy? What is joy to you? Where do you discover joy? When do you experience joy? And why is joy so important? And I want to thank you, the congregation, for giving Anna some money so that she had this experience. I feel very fortunate, and I appreciate it. Hello. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Anna Krasik. 
This summer, I was blessed with the opportunity to go to Montreat Youth Conference for a second time. When I went last summer, it felt completely new and exciting, but also pretty nerve-wracking. Excuse me. Last year, I found people I call family today. So returning for a second year felt like running back to my chosen family. At the end of each worship service, something said was, we are all children of God. We are all brothers and sisters in Christ. My entire life, I've always wanted a sister. And on this trip, I found my true soul sister. My roommate, Sarah, and I connected so deeply this year, and I'm so blessed to have her in my life. I always look forward to our phone calls to catch up on life, friends, and what college is like for her. She's one of my favorite people, and I'm honored to call her my big sister in Christ. A favorite memory of mine with Sarah is singing at the top of our lungs along to the worship music. Oh, and the music. I absolutely loved the music at Montreat this year, and I've been listening to it on repeat. The songs we sang this year showed me how much power and how strongly you can feel the work of the Holy Spirit through music. When I was singing about being a child of God, or how we can all sit together at a crowded table with Christ, or joy like a fountain, I felt full of the Holy Spirit. That feeling is such a special thing that I hope everyone can feel sometime in their life. Sometimes we try to find that fullness and joy, but try to find it without the help of God. And that's where a story we talked a lot about in Montreat comes in. I'm sure many of us know the story from the Bible about the lost sheep who wandered from the other 99 in the flock and how Jesus left the 99 in search of the one lost sheep. In Montreat, we talked about what the lost sheep can symbolize. I think we've all been the lost sheep at least once in our lives. The lost sheep can mean something different for everyone. The lost sheep can mean you went in search of an answer and forgot to ask God or grew impatient when you didn't see an answer from God right away. You can be the lost sheep who breaks the status quo by leaving the other 99 droning on in life, but get distracted and lose your way. No matter why you're a lost sheep, the one thing constant is that Jesus comes and finds you. Jesus meets us where we are in life and reminds us, you are a child of God. Do not lose sight of your brothers and sisters in Christ who are around you and will show you the power of God's love. Since Montreat, my prayers have shifted. I used to ask God, help me to do this. I really want this. I hope this happens. But now, they sound like this. Lord, I trust you. I'm giving you my worry, my fear, my hopes, and my joy. These are yours, and I know you have a plan for me. All I hope for is that I can take what I've learned in Montreat and the things I have implemented in my life and share them with people I meet. I have learned that joy and grief and sadness can and often do coexist. I have learned that God will be there when we feel extremely lonely. I have learned, most importantly, what love truly is. I'm so extremely grateful and blessed that I was able to go to Montreat again. Thank you very much for listening to what I have to say about one of my favorite places and your generous donations. Thank you. As Reverend Steve said, Montreat has been called a thin place where heaven and earth, where God and humanity are a little closer together. Do you know that it's much easier to be Christian on Sunday in church? It's even easier to be Christian at Montreat because of that fact. Heaven and earth closer together. Montreat again this year gave me the energy to come back 
and continue my ministry, working with you, working with the children, working with the youth. Have you heard the expression, God is dead, the church is dying? Maybe even heard someone mumbling, Deerhurst is dying. Well, as long as we gather, as long as we gather together, seeking God, Christ is alive right here, right now. Some of the things that are going on, some of the things I'd like to remind you of, weekly church school. We have dedicated teachers that have prepared lessons for the youngest among us. We have Kirsten in the nursery waiting for even the younger, beyond, uh, younger than pre-K. We have a dedicated group, our elders and deacons, who reach out to those important to us in the community, within the congregation. And if you forgot, the deacons are giving us hot dog barbecue today for lunch. We have the food closet, we have the outside food cupboard reaching out to the community. Today, we have 17 youth and adults that are gonna be here during youth group. Deerhurst is alive and well. Thank you. First Presbyterian Church. Where are we in prayer this morning? In almost impossibly long and exhausting prayer list is on the back of your bulletin. And it's that way for only as long as we decide that we're doing it on our own. But when we draw on a power greater than ourselves, um, our prayers are not only important, they are inexhaustible. 
I'm going to read for you the prayers of the week. I'm going to invite you to take home ministry prayers for the world and prayers for continued healing. And find a place in your own house to keep it. Find a place where you can change how you're praying for people as you learn more throughout the week. Um, and if you have young people in your house, find paper, pen, crayon, uh, magic marker, something so that if they don't have words to write yet, they have pictures to draw, and those pictures can be a part of our prayer. Um, prayers for the week. Rally day, joy happening. Diane Regal recovering from surgery. She's doing very well. Um, Irv Ruppel has severe back pain. And um, Marilyn asked that we keep Irv in prayer. Shelly Gavigan beginning chemotherapy. That comes from Tom Rowley and Debbie Henning. Gustavo and Enrique, grandchildren of a friend, born too much premature, will be in, in an ICU for two months. And that again comes from Tom and Rowley, Tom Rowley and Debbie Henning. Dr. Wysom Elelik, uh, recovering from a severe bike accident. And I apologize for um, not doing well with his name. Uh, Gary Reese, back home for some mending before his next treatment. That comes from Robin and family. Um, Elaine Keppel, hopefully coming home very soon waiting for a bone marrow transplant. The people of Florida recovering from devastation of Hurricane Idelia. The people of California recovering from Hurricane Hillary for Neil Wixon's success with his new treatment. For the people on the island of Maui. For the people of Morocco. And the number is now over 2,000 people who have died from this devastatingly powerful earthquake. Don Jones, Leon Combe, Louis Pease, Jim Moore, and uh, maybe an answer at last, one more biopsy in October. Those are our prayers for the week. Let us come together in prayer. Lord, be with us in the next seven days. Be with us as we offer up before you the things that we know about, the things that fill us full of joy, the things that remind us that the distance between here and heaven isn't all that great, the things that encourage us and invigorate us to be faithful followers. We ask your presence. We ask your presence as we follow that we might also be a people who bring before you our fear, our anger, our exhaustion, our sense of wonder that is not inspiring, but our sense of wonder over when will things return to a, a new normal that is much easier to deal with. So Lord, we come to you in prayer. We come to you over the next seven days. We lift up our joy. We lift up our fear, we lift up our anger, we lift up our questions, and we give them all over to you. Make your presence felt, especially with those who slept outside last night under the stars in Morocco. We might think that's kind of romantic and fun, and they're doing it because they can't trust the structures that they used to live in. Guide us, heal us, Make your presence felt. It is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. What I'm going to ask you to do now is either close your eyes or open your eyes. But let us spend a moment in prayer, silent prayer, where our task is nothing more than to give thanks for all that God has done for us and to give thanks for all that God can do in and through us. A moment dedicated to give thanks. When our moment of giving thanks is over, um, the chancel choir will come up 
And instead of a doxology today, they will offer up, we will take what you offer. And then um, at that point in time, our offering will come forward and be placed on the communion table as an act of dedication. Good of all goodness and grace, receive the gifts we offer, and grant that our whole life may give you glory and praise. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. If some of our youngest are still with us as we sing Jesus Loves Me together, um, teachers can go off and show them their sacred church school places and um, and then when we're done, we'll go downstairs and we're having hot dogs. We're also having a remarkable invention called a bunny dog. So if you are a vegetarian and you're worried about hot dogs, they marinate carrots and they do them on the grill. So everybody is invited to come downstairs immediately following worship. Thank you. 
quick reminder, you're going to leave here with a blessing. You're going to leave here with a benediction. You're going to leave here with something that sends all of us from this place to where God needs us to be next. And that's different than a prayer. Don't close your eyes. I want to see your eyes. Open your eyes. Receive what God has in store for us. And now the love of God. And now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship, communion, and support of the Holy Spirit. Let it be ours this day, every day, now and forevermore. Amen. Wait, girls. <laughs>